he told me, okay, now you're going to wow. share your story. And I'm like, oh, we don't need to do that. We got through everything just me and you. Nobody yeah. knows. And I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that promise. So everything just built yeah. on that. And the workshop, I love what you said about your addiction doesn't have to be alcohol. That's what I say. Uh -huh. like the Change Your Story workshop is about breaking free from whatever's breaking mm. you. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello friends, my guest today has a unique story of facing her own mortality and living to find purpose and identity. After running away from her dreams and battling with addictions for over a decade, Kirsten Lee is now a best-selling author, speaker, actress, and the founder of the Change Your Story Workshop. Kirsten, you are a friend of mine, and I want to thank you for making time to be with us today. I think you have such a unique platform, and you're reaching people for the better, aren't you? Amen. It is all God. It is a blessing to be here. Thank you so much, Brenda, for having me. Uh, well, it's a blessing to have you. I just want to really be able to have a conversation that I think is going to inspire people. And I'd love for you to just kind of give our viewers today a little of your backstory and talk about that and what, what you came from. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm from this tiny town in Kentucky. I never fit in. I was constantly bullied. I had a very turbulent relationship mm. with my dad. And I developed an eating disorder that I kept secret um, when I was a teenager. But despite all of that, I had huge dreams. I was going to be a singer and an actress. I practiced all the time. I got a job when I was 12 and I moved to New York City when I was barely 18. You know, I was ready to conquer the world. And I did a lot of cool and courageous things, but I had this mm -hmm. backstory that was following me. You know, it's mm. true that we have to move forward despite what's in the way, but we also have to deal to heal. And I never oh, did wow. that. I just kept on going. Um, yeah. If you were to have told me that right when my music career was taking off, that I would run away from everything I had ever dreamed in and worked toward, that one day I would be drinking a 42 ounce beer before I got to work, mm. just so I could have enough alcohol in my system to make it into lunch, I would have told you that you were crazy. You know what, I would yeah. have been wrong. Um, when life happened, mm. and we don't have time to go into all that life happening, um, <laughs> people yeah. can read the book, Change Your Story, <laughs> if you're interested. But, um, you know, pain that hadn't been processed well, or at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it led to an addiction <clears throat> with alcohol that cost me years of my life. Yeah. Um, I drank yeah. 20 beers a day. No one knew. Mm. I almost died three times of alcohol poisoning. Yet I wow. kept drinking. I knew I wasn't going to make it much longer. Um, and God gave me a dream in the midst of my mess um, that mm. led to my journey of breakthrough. So it should have probably changed it right then, but it did it, but it did set me on a path. <laughs> and so for the sure. next two years, I studied the work of trailblazing psychologists, neuroscientists, mm. psychiatrists, the world's best pastors, thought leaders. I went to church twice a week. I listened to five different sermons a week. Um, I wrote like crazy, asking myself question after question. I broke down my life like an actor breaks down a scene. Mm. Um, I would listen to mm. praise music on it's my good. headphones blaring as I slept. And I didn't recognize it at the time, but everything I was doing was rewiring my brain. And yeah. after God delivered me a couple weeks after my breakthrough, he gave me another dream. And I was like trying to write down mm. the revelations and insights as quick as I could. And I woke up and I sat up in bed and I said, God, are you wanting me to create a new type of recovery program? Mm. Um, and I felt him say, not today. <laughs> I was like, that's good news. I can barely walk. But that was 11. The pressure's off. Exactly, exactly. But there hadn't been a program that worked for me. So that's why I had spent all these years doing this. And so wow. when God said not today, yeah, that was 11 years ago. So the Change Your Story workshop um, was birthed from what God gave me 11 years ago. 
Wow. And I've heard you say that purpose was really, or finding purpose was really part of your breakthrough. And I think that that's a powerful statement. I want you to unpack that for us. But, you know, when, if we don't have purpose, I mean, we are lost. We're just floundering and we're just kind of throwing, you know, like I say, throw spaghetti noodles at the wall and see where they, you know, if they stick. And, um, I, you know, I really feel like that you also uh, mentioning that this is a process and finding purpose in every step of that process is key because, you know, if we do bury our pain, then we're just giving power to that pain, which can lead us to many forms of addiction. Not every one's addiction is uh, with alcohol or chemical uh, addictions, but it can also be uh, being addicted to social media or to shopping or to whatever, you know, to food. Uh, so talk about that process and you know, how you had to, what were the baby steps and how did you have to face maybe yourself and yeah. face the truth? Let's talk about that. Yeah, you just said <laughs> so many important things right there. <laughs> you know, I say that purpose is the key to breakthrough because mm -hmm. it is bigger than us. It's what God created us for. And there are so many books, you know, about finding your purpose, but really it's already in us. It's about discovering it. It's about getting rid of yeah. all the junk that's in the way of that. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, I always knew I had this big purpose, but I thought that I had messed it up and I did mess up a lot of things, but God has a way yeah. of reworking it, putting, putting you on a different mm -hmm. route and making it better than you could ever imagine. And so, you know, without vision, we perish. I was perishing. So really it's about getting rid of all that junk that's in the way and discovering what that purpose is again. Um, mm. And, you know, we have to go through so well, much. What's the difference between finding purpose as God would bring that inspiration, as God would speak to your, your inner person as you're still, as you become, as you slow down and become still before him, what's the difference in finding purpose and just finding a persona. I think there's a, I think there's something there. Do you get what I'm, because you're in the acting business. You know what it means to put on a persona and to play a role. And don't you think a lot of people are doing this? Oh, absolutely. I pretended that everything so where, was. What's the difference? Oh, there is such yeah, a big ahead. difference. I pretended that everything was fine. You know, yeah. um, there's such a big difference when you're acting, you are putting on a role. That's not what we're yeah. supposed to do in life. It's exhausting. You know, I say that it I had is. faith that could move mountains on one side. And on the other side, I had all mm -hmm. this fear that was counteracting the faith. And, you know, we can yeah. balance very well for a while, but balancing mm -hmm. takes every bit of our energy. And it's about letting mm -hmm. go of all those layers of lies, the truths we've mm -hmm. believed that aren't true at all and becoming that yeah. real person and be okay with that. It's like now mm -hmm. I share all of the secrets I work so hard to keep because it's not yeah. about me. It is not about yeah. me. It is about yeah. being a vessel for God to use mm -hmm. me in whatever capacity mm -hmm. he wants to do. And I think mm. so often we become, in, we, um, when we have that persona, we become, in, <laughs> we, we fall in love with that dream versus mm -hmm. the dream mm -hmm. giver. And oh, that's good. In a way, I did that with my music and my acting at a time. Mm. I was, you know, yes, I loved God. Yes, I wanted to do good things for him, but I was so in love with what yeah. I was doing and being that person. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not about that. And when I made a mm -hmm. promise to God that really changed my story, I made a promise that I would do whatever he said if he would just yeah. use me. And we all say yeah. those promises, but I actually meant it that time. <laughs> and right. to the best of my ability. Yeah, we, we do. Exactly. Right. Oh, I'll never do this. Oh, please, God. And to the best best yeah. of my ability, I've done that. You know, I never thought I would yeah. write a book. Um, I, wrote, I write middle grade fiction as well as adult nonfiction. Um, so God gave me the book Believe for kids. And then he told me, okay, now you're going to wow. share your story. And I'm like, oh, we don't need to do that. We got through everything just me and you. Nobody yeah. knows. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that promise. So everything just built yeah. on that. And the workshop, I love what you said about your addiction doesn't have to be alcohol. That's what I say. Uh -huh. like the Change Your Story workshop is about breaking free from whatever is breaking mm. you. 
and discovering yeah. how purpose is the key to breakthrough. I mean, busyness yeah. is addiction all dressed up. You know, as long as we can yeah. keep- Right, that's good. Yeah, as long as we can keep putting stuff over our pain, we never deal with it. And I would never wish what I had dealing with alcohol on anyone. I wish that I hadn't had it. But I will say mm. I'm so grateful for the fact that it made me dig deep. It made me mm -hmm. say, okay, what's all in the way? Because I knew it, the alcohol had, be, had become a problem, but the real problem was the why. Why was I doing what I was doing? That's good. Yeah, that's really good because it's really about getting down to those layers of the root, yes. right? And, and you know, when we, uh, when we don't deal with the root, um, I, sorry for sounding a little cheesy here, but we have no fruit. <laughs> You know, I, I'm thinking, honestly, I mean, you and I, we, we grew up uh, in the word, correct? I mean, you, yes. you understood the word, but yet you didn't understand the word on the inside of you yes. where you were wounded. And this is really what I'm, I'm, you were both so passionate about. Uh, I'm thinking about the parable right now, or, or the story rather, where Jesus was with his disciples and he cursed the fig tree. Do you remember that? Absolutely. And because it was early in the morning and it was would be kind of breakfast time and obviously he would have been hungry and as he's on his his uh, journey and he he says to he goes up to the fig tree there's no fruit there which the leaves indicated that there should have been mm. so this this is really interesting because as they come back through I think it was Peter that says master look the tree that you cursed has withered and died from the root yes i'm getting chills right now i'm getting chills right now thinking about this because here's the thing and here's what i've heard said uh so eloquently and i'm trying my best to um to relay this <clears throat> but there are some things jesus wanted them to know that cannot be changed unless you deal with it at the root yes and so many of us are walking around with leaves on our tree in all of our glory we're trying to project to the world, I've got fruit for you. But when people come to us, do we have fruit for them or are we just a facade? And so, you know, that, that, that fig tree never bore fruit again. That fig tree never lived again. And I, I just think what a beautiful thing when it is the mercy of God that actually interrupts us on this, you know, when we're trying to fix ourselves and numb ourselves out, mm -hmm which is what you were doing mm -hmm. with the alcohol and, you know, trying to fix our identity and our, all of our wounds that we're not paying attention to yes. all those layers. The interruptions are painful, aren't they, <laughs> Kirsten? So <clears throat> painful. I don't even know the yeah. word for it. So painful, but you know what? So is living like that living like yeah. that oh knowing that you're yes. faking it wondering if someone's going to find out if they're going to see the truth it is exhausting yeah. and knowing that god has something so big you know one of the, mm. the enemy's biggest lie is that that i listened to for so long is that we're too far gone that we've made too many mistakes mm. that this is the way it always is going to be that you that you need this that you have to have this thing to get by it is yeah. a lie you know, but we have to mm -hmm. yes. realize we, it, there's so much cognitive dissonance going on. We love God. We believe in mm -hmm. God, yet we're listening to the lie. And the lie is yeah. what's leading us, actually. And we have to understand mm -hmm. that and break free from that. You know, spiritual warfare is such a huge aspect of change that no one talks about. And I think yeah. that's why there's like a revolving door in recovering <clears throat> recovering centers because I say you have to get to the root of the issue because if not mm -hmm. you can fix one problem by willpower by determination um, just because but what happens is that why that why is it at the bottom of that root it will just find another mm -hmm. area of your life to rule and reign in and that is not what yeah. changing our story in freedom is about it's mm. getting to mm. all of those roots. And there were so many in mine. It wasn't just one thing. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. putting the truth back in I get there, it. You know, not just yeah. ripping it up by the root, but placing God's truth, asking him what's mm. next. I think one of the biggest mm -hmm. things I see um, 
is living in regrets of what might have been, what could have been, what should have been. And Good. I did that for years. And the thing is, yeah. I felt like one day I was writing my journal, God, I'm so sorry for wasting so much time. And I felt God say, you're wasting my time right now. And it's true. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, what's next? What do I do from yeah. here? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. I mean, in the workshop, and I also <laughs> live post, I counsel people, and it all goes back to their thoughts, their childhood, mm -hmm. things they heard, things they said, the way they're speaking now. You know, the power of our words mm -hmm. is phenomenal. And we have to not just know that scripture, but understand what that scripture means. And yeah. just um, Good. getting counseling that covers, put the bandaid on the problem, it just gives you another one. And the thing is, yeah. God is there for us in those deep places. So yes, mm. it is painful, but it is also freeing. It really- And you're gonna get through it. Yes, yeah. if you just keep on trusting. You're going to get, yes, yes, exactly. Did you have mentors in your life during that season that, uh, that helped you to be able to recognize some of those things? I had mentors in the sense that I read so many books and I followed certain speakers. Tim Story was one of them. Um, yeah. You know, I would take notes from all the, I listened to the best, I pursued the best, but mm -hmm. I had no one in my mm -hmm. life that was doing that because I kept everything a secret. And I would never yeah. recommend that for anyone else. <clears throat> However, mm -hmm. I know that it was what I was supposed to do because I had, when I, when I wanted to, go for a drink when I wanted to break down, when I was feeling like I couldn't handle this anymore, I didn't have anyone to call on the phone because of keeping it as, I only had God. And so I went to God yeah. and the time I spent with God was like no mm -hmm. other. When God is all mm -hmm. you have and that's where you're getting everything, you become so strong in your relationship with him, with knowing yourself. And I feel like the Change Your Story workshop would not have been birthed if I had not have mm -hmm. done that. God wanted to do something yeah. in me that couldn't be done another way. And I yeah. looked at all the different programs. I used things from each one, but in the, I took all of what worked and what God mm -hmm. gave me and created something new. So- Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So, okay, for the person that has struggled with sobriety, uh, they've tried time and time and time and time again, and they keep falling. Is there hope? Should they give up? What do they do right now when they're just condemning themselves? They beat themselves up and then they just need to numb out even more. Exactly. And they're hurting everyone around them too. They're hurting their families. They're hurting their, the people that love them, not just themselves. What's your uh, encouragement to that person yes, right now? Absolutely. And yeah, <clears throat> forgiving myself was the hardest thing I did, mm -hmm. you know, because of the people I had hurt, the things that I had let yeah. go of. Um, but mm -hmm. I think it's our thoughts, our beliefs. We know so much more in neuroscience than we did, you know, 10 years ago. I, I say that, you know, yeah. so, um, science has now proven that we can literally rewire our minds, rewire our brains. This goes right along with what God has said since the beginning of time. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know that once an addict, always an addict, it biblically mm. nor scientifically is true. So we have to get That's rid powerful. of that, you know, and speak life into yeah. our life. It's like, yes, I was absolutely hands down addicted to alcohol, yeah. but something uh -huh. in my spirit said, uh-uh, don't be claiming that on mm. you. I am a world changer. I am a history maker. I am a overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Granted, my world was a mess, but that's who I was inside. Yeah. <laughs> I would want to speak life into everyone who is feeling that mm. instead of saying, I'm so messed up. I'm so depressed. I can't quit this. I used to do all of those things. All my wisdom is born uh -huh. from my time in the wilderness <laughs> and um, got along with Dr. <laughs> Caroline Leaf and a few others. But start saying, yeah. you know, I am an overcomer. I can do all things mm. in Christ. I can change. God has great plans for me. Start mm. proclaiming God's truth over your life. And of mm -hmm. course, I am, you know, available. My workshop's available. I'm available to talk to anyone who feels like that because mm. God saved my life <clears throat> because he wanted others saved. 
it's yes. not about me. He, mm-hmm. That is why. And so I hate pe- yeah. seeing people suffer like I did or worse mm-hmm. because I know there's hope. Yeah. I know there's freedom and everything <laughs> that you went through, God can use because everyone's story is so unique. And that's how God made us because, mm-hmm. you know, someone else is going to have a story that others can relate to and they're going to be able to help heal and give hope. Yeah, that's true. And and I do have to say in, in response to uh, you saying it's not about you, I understand that as a motivation for what you do now. You're living outside of yourself. Uh, whereas before you were living on the inside of your pain and limited by that. But I do want to say that it is about you. It's about every individual in the sense that God loves each and every one of us. So, so uniquely and so uh, thoroughly. And each one of us has the image of God. We were created in his image and it's, it's in us. And so finding that I think is really the journey and discovering, you know, wow, there's so much more to who I am as I embrace this, this process. And I don't ignore all the warning signs and I'm not just throwing formulas and words and scriptures at it. I'm applying those things and I'm, I'm asking God to breathe life and to help me to, um, to acknowledge as he uncovers those layers. So let's talk about your, um, your, your classes that the recovery program that you have. And, uh, you know, I'd love to hear a little more about the format and how you go about this and, uh, how people are breaking free. Sure. And everything you said is so true. Um, yeah. it's not about me in the sense of, okay, people need to hear my story. I'm sharing it. If God wants me to, but it is about me that God created us for a purpose and we ha- we are his hands and yeah. feet. So we have to do that. And what he has birthed in us has to come out so we can be the fullness mm-hmm. of ourselves. And I love that. And yes. one cool thing that God, uh, an amazing gift that God gave me is like when I stopped acting and stopped singing, I thought that, you know, that was over and I was okay with that because God uh, had something yeah. new, you know? Um, mm-hmm. And after, I think it was like after five years of just doing everything that God had shared with me, the books and speaking and creating the workshop, he brought acting and music back into my life. And it's Mm -hmm. like, what a gift, how God can, once he knows he can trust you and that you're a willing vessel, anything is possible. And I (laughs) want to speak that into the life of all those people who are hurting. Um, But the workshop, the workshop is nine weeks. It is offered online. Mm -hmm. It is, um, there's a curriculum to it. We, it's all about understanding your backstory, you know, um, identifying those um, unwanted desires, that psychology behind your desires, um, mm-hmm. identifying your why. We go through, um, you know, feeling our feelings. We have to learn to feel again because whether it's shopping or sex or drugs or alcohol, we've mm-hmm. learned to numb those. And yeah. we've either learned to numb them or be controlled by them. You know, the mm-hmm. hardest thing I did mm-hmm. was not stopping drinking 20 beers a day, which sounds crazy. It was <laughs> retraining my brain. It was it was taking those mm-hmm. thoughts captive, understanding mm-hmm. where they're coming from. You know, there's a reason why we think the way we do, you know, and we mm-hmm. have to figure that out so we can change that. That and getting feelings mm-hmm. out of the driver's seat of my life. They don't, we have to understand yeah. our feelings, but they can't be the boss. So I think those are mm. two huge things because when we start to feel, that's what gets us all crazy. And we have to um, get to the bottom of that. So we can feel yeah. appropriately and yeah. know how to deal that's with really that. That's really good. And so much of it is generational, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, it's in terms of mind mindsets yes. and, and, you know, the influences and the environments that we grow up in. You spoke to uh, a, a few minutes ago, you were talking about our childhood environments. And, you know, that can even be outsiders. It doesn't have to be within our family. Mm-hmm. But I do think that we have mindsets for how we process information. And it can take some seismic events to really push us to the place where we're willing to even take a look at it and recognize, oh, there's something going on in here with the way that I think. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not processing the in my in my relationships, um, you know, in the all the what ifs in life, all you know, 
all my fears, the things that I dread. I'm not processing this in a healthy way. And I think that as we become healthier, would you agree with this? We begin to do that a little quicker and we recognize, I don't think we're ever finished with process. Absolutely. Do you? Oh, I, everything you said, I agree with. And some days I'll be like, okay, I need to sit down and read my book. <laughs> I need to sit down. <laughs> what, what do I tell people to do right now? It's true because yeah. yes, it's quicker. It's easier to take those thoughts captive, to reject those, to know they're not of God, to know they're not of you. And we can, we, it's proven we can change our brain. Some, sometimes some scientists say 60 days, some say 90, but the fact that we can do that in that time, when we've spent a lifetime doing the wrong thing is amazing, but it's not, you're not fixed. You constantly apply those things to your life. And like I said, it's easier, but I remind myself every day what I tell, what I help everybody else do. I have to do the same thing. So we go through those things. Mm -hmm. we, we go through how spiritual warfare is an aspect of change. Um, and then one of the unique aspects of my breakthrough was that I used everything in my acting background to change my story. So I teach um, you how to a four step formula that enables you to stop playing the role of victim or villain, which mm. I've played both in my life, and become the hero of your own story. And that's wow. what it's about. It's about becoming that hero that God made us, you know, unique, full, mm. and free. And when I say free, it means free not to want to go back, free to have so mm -hmm. much joy and in life inside mm. you that you can move forward in whatever way that yeah. is for you. So, you know, I share messages, quick messages each um, week. And then the ladies and the men that are in the workshop get to do the work and share with each other what came up and so they learn from each other as well. Nice. So there's an interact interactive aspect. Oh, it's all to the live. Program? It's all live. And I do it live in person too, oh. but right now it's been online since COVID. So absolutely. We're all online together. I share a yeah. brief message in the beginning to get us started on the work. They all have a workbook. We go through classwork together. We break for about yeah. 10 minutes. They do some, um, some more classwork. We come back and they share. And then there's a lot of work mm -hmm. they do. I call it making room for success rather than homework. But that's yeah. who wants to do homework. That's good. And, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, we do that every week for nine weeks. And the testimonies that are coming in, I mean, people that have been mm. in counseling for their whole life, they've been through different kind of programs are breaking free hmm. from all kinds of things. And wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all God. It is. It makes my mess make a Let's, lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can you talk about uh, a, a couple of those testimonies? I mean, give us a story without divulging uh, yeah. an identity or someone's name. Give us a, a story of, of someone that's really found freedom and success in your program. Um, there's, um, thank you for asking. There's one lady um, that her addiction was alcohol, red wine. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke at a friend's conference, just like four minutes on the workshop. And then I had a breakout room later and she, she joined the workshop and she told me that as soon as she had been praying, she had tried every other type of program and it wasn't working. And she just kept, knew mm. God had something else for her. She just knew it. And when she heard me speak, she said it was like God was speaking through me directly to her. And she's been doing mm. the program and she is, hasn't drank since then. And she has been doing the work and is just living a whole new life. And we're not even, we're only in the wow. fifth week. And it's just about, mm. it's, it's amazing to see the transformation in her and all that it's bringing about, all the new things it's bringing um, another lady just took it and she has a video testimony out. She said, um, hers was just her past things. Her, she had, a, she had had a sexual assault when she was young and had yeah. become promiscuous because of that, not believing in herself, her identity, you know, thinking she was damaged mm -hmm. and she is so completely free. And she's like, I got my dream back. Mm -hmm. I got my dream wow. back for your workshop. And to me, that's huge mm -hmm. because addictions mm -hmm. and problems and other things that other people have done like her, they steal our dreams and yeah. our dreams and our purpose. That's what God has for mm -hmm. us. So and there's, mm -hmm. a, there's another lady who struggles with forgiveness. You just could not let go of that forgiveness. And there was so much cognitive dissonance going in on her. You know, she's praying and doing sure. the word asking, but then she's cursing him and yelling and screaming. So just learning a different mm -hmm. way to speak and to, and be fully available for God to forgive. She has an amazing testimony. 
Uh, mm. So there have been so That's many incredible. on different topics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's what I love, Kirsten, is that God will take what he's given to us. He'll take whatever's in our hands and he will use it. And you know what? I wish we had more time to talk about uh, the program, but I know that uh, people need to call you if they're in need because it, you have a, a unique way of reaching out and many people are identifying as they go through your program. How can we find you? Absolutely. Um, KirstenLee.com. K-I-R-S-T-I-N-L-E-I-G-H.com. There's also the Change Your Story Workshop.com. That will tell you all about the workshop. It shows testimonies, uh, videos, gives you the curriculum, and that can give you a lot of information. So the Change Your Story Workshop.com or KirstenLee.com. My books are also on there. I have Change Your Story. Yes. I have Believe, uh, which is a fiction book for tweens. And then this is the workbook for the Change Your Story Workshop. Um, I don't, it's not a book to just read. It does go, it, it's mm. designed to go along with the workshop. But you can find out everything mm. through my social media and through the websites. Thank you for asking. And thank you for everything that Wonderful. you do. Because you're changing lives every day in so many ways. Oh, thank you, my friend. And thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, friends, I know you were blessed today and maybe it's not you that's struggling with addiction, but maybe it's someone that you know and love. And I want you to know that these resources like Kirsten Lee's are available to people that, to help them change the paradigm, to shift their lives and change the trajectory of their future and their purpose. We love you. We thank you for being here. Until next time, I'm Brenda Crouch. Wow.